You guys look fantastic. Praise God. Let's give God praise. Hallelujah. <laughs> Love it. Blessed. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, as we plead your blood, Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you, Lord, for all of eternity. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that it's your salvation, your perfect work, your identity, and you freely gave it to us. And I thank you, Father God, that all you ask us to do is to call out your name. And you being the perfect, loving, amazing Father that you are, you will save us no matter where we're at. And Holy Spirit, we're thankful that you live abundantly within us. That we know, Lord Jesus Christ, that, that you died for this very reason. So that God Almighty will live in us forever. And Lord Jesus, we're so thankful that in your name, you said, you commanded us to do greater things. So Father, in this message that you have put together, and Father, I'm just a mouthpiece. It has nothing to do with me, Father God, rebuke me. All the glory is yours, Lord Jesus Christ. Whoever the mouthpiece is, Father, the glory is yours in worship. That, Father God, we ask you and thank you that you speak thy word, Lord Jesus Christ, by the power of your Holy Spirit through your conviction in this message that you have put together for your holy church, Open Arms Community Church. And I thank you, Father God, for revelation upon revelation in changing our, our hearts through repentance to draw nearer, closer to you. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise, Lord Jesus Christ. We bless you, Holy Spirit, and Holy Spirit, we're so excited in what you will teach us. And it's in Jesus Christ's holy and mighty and precious name we pray, and all God's beloved said, amen. amen. God bless you guys. Hallelujah. My God, you're like a ninja. You just, you just came up here right when I opened my eyes. Praise God. Hallelujah. Been praying for you. Amen. Been praying for you. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. Beloved church, let's pray for our beloved sister. Now remember, her beloved husband is in heaven, amen? amen. And we all believe that we're going to be there soon, amen? amen? Heavenly Father, as we lift up your beloved daughter, Lord Jesus Christ, I plead your blood all over her. And I thank you, Heavenly Father, that only your peace, Holy Spirit, can help us through all the trials and tribulations of this fallen world. And Father, I just thank you so much that as your beloved daughter sits here in your holy house, that above all, Lord Jesus Christ, your presence would overwhelm her. And give her peace, Father. And above all, Father, I thank you. That is never goodbye. It's see you later. Because we live forever with you. And it's in Jesus' name. And all God's beloved said, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Love it. Amen. Amen. Praise God. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Whoa, don't get me running now. We got to preach. Amen. We got to preach. Our worship service is titled Roadmap to Heaven. We're going to go over the destination, GPS, the vehicle, and any, any kind of suggestions that God has for us. Amen. So once again, when we talk about as far as what God has in store, the beauty is, is when you go to the written word of God, God makes it clear. I, I'm a firm believer with every cell in my body, every hair on my body, that's a lot of hair now, right, that all the answers you need for life is in this written word. Yes. Can I get an amen? amen? All the answers. But here's the beauty of a new covenant church. Say it with me, I am. I am. New, covenant. new covenant. Here's the beauty of the new covenant church, hallelujah, is that God doesn't stay right here. See, many of you beat me to it. God lives in here. Amen. And the beauty of his presence here within you is that he, say his name, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, he will encourage you, he will advocate for you, he will bless you, he will protect you, he will shine his light through you and expose what the enemy's trying to do in your life, in your family, right? And so God give us these, these it, 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 I call it a road map, right? A road map. Church starts at 630 and, uh, <laughs> and, and what I love about this, see, now these days there is no roadmap. I don't even know if you can buy a roadmap. I don't know. That's a good question. Can you? 
Brother PJ, are you making that up? Your beloved wife's like, no, you're like, yep. You can buy them? Because I remember back when I, you know, when I was younger, that's what you bought was the roadmap, and you unfolded it, and it was like a blanket, like a king-size blanket, right? And it's like, how do I read this thing? You know what I mean? You got to be an engineer to read it. Now you just pull it up on your phone, right? Ain't that amazing? But anyway, so we're going to be in Philippians, and this is what God has for us. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind. Let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for his own interest, but also for the interest of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in, in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant, of a slave, and coming in the likeness of men. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death. Now remember, this point of death that Lord Jesus Christ, that this Bible is referring to, this first death, is Lord Jesus leaving heaven. Can I get an amen? Can you imagine here Lord Jesus for all of eternity in perfection and it comes a time to save our souls where he has to leave heaven? I can't imagine it. That right there, we can just spend the remainder of our days worshiping God, Brother DJ, about that. Right? Come on now, right? I mean, think about it. All he knew being God is perfection with the Father, Holy Spirit, reigning, right? Just think back of your most perfect day. Don't feel bad if you have to think far back because that's, that's what I'm doing right now. I'm like, it gets gooder and gooder, right? But it's, it's, been, it's, it's been a tough week. It's been a, pe it's been a tough past couple weeks, right? It's been, it's been tough. But praise God, it doesn't change who Lord Jesus Christ is. Can I get an amen? It don't change who my God is, right? Listen, it don't matter what our week's been like or what our family's acting or what our children's doing or whatever. It doesn't change who God is. And that's where God wants us. Can I get an amen? That's where God wants us as his children. Don't let this world change who I am. I am who I am. So let's worship I am and watch I am manifest within us. Amen? You see, the po to the point of death, he left heaven, came to earth. And then now the Bible says, even the death on the cross, meaning that he humbled himself even more. See, it's one type of humble that we can't barely explain, even understand, of how Lord Jesus and the Father would look. And Holy Spirit says, I'll go talk to Mary. Do we got to do this? And of course, the angel received the call. All right, I'll go talk to Mary. Can you imagine that conversation in the throne room of heaven? See, sis, gosh, I love you. Can you imagine that? All of heaven is at a standstill, right? There's no sorrow, no pain in heaven. It's perfection. But let me be straight up with you. As perfection, you can also discern they're talking about something serious right now. Our God is talking about something. Wait, there go the angel. Where did the angel go? And the next thing you know, right, Lord Jesus Christ left. Even death on the cross. He humbled himself, not only being a man on this earth, taking, taking upon himself all the insults, all the cruelty, right, all the bullying, People don't talk about this, but the, the culture back then, oh, absolutely horrible. Can you imagine just kids going, that ain't your daddy? Huh? You ever think this way when you worship God? You ever think this way? See, right now, Holy Spirit's encouraging you to think this way. Because sometimes we think of God as a God that detaches himself from us when the truth of the matter is he lives in us. And he feels everything that you feel. And his presence goes before you. But all he's asking of you 
is will you bless him and worship him, amen? So when we continue on this road map, this destination of what we want, God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, and those in heaven, and those on earth, and those under the earth. Oh, come on, Brother Mike. Hallelujah. If that's not power, I don't know what is. Can I get an amen? amen. Every soul. Say it with me. Every. every. Who? Hallelujah. This means don't be crunchy if somebody says they're not a Christian, they don't believe, and like you believe, they have a, They're a Christian. They just don't know it yet. Amen. I've told people that. I've told people that. I said, you serve Allah, you a Christian. How dare you say that to me? You just don't know it yet. But my God will make you confess that Jesus is Lord. I pray that when you do it, you're with me in heaven, not, not, not shunned from heaven. Yeah. Amen. I'm surrounded by worshipers that guess what? Heaven is our home. Yeah. Woo! Hallelujah, Sister Jackie. Yeah. Amen. We are heaven bound. Heaven bound, amen? And just because we know that that's our roadmap and our destination, Brother William, church starts at 630, praise God. Just because we know that that's our destination, that we are heaven bound and everything, listen, God gives us a roadmap. He gives us directions. Can I get an amen? That every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, yeah. hallelujah, it's therefore reason, family. I love it when the Bible says this, therefore, it's therefore reason, and then God says, my beloved, amen. Who is God's beloved in this room, amen. Hallelujah, praise God, I pray every hand goes up in Jesus' name. I do, I pray every hand goes up. I am my beloved, my beloved. And this is what God has to say to you. As you have always obeyed, not as much in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, Work out your own salvation. Say it with me, my own salvation. When the Bible says your own salvation, does that mean your own and other people? <laughs> but may I expose what this devil's been trying to do lately? The gossips, the judgment, the talking about other brothers and sisters. Right? Why? It doesn't bless Holy Spirit. It just opens up darkness, and all that darkness wants to do is to take you and isolate you, right? Really, I mean, make you just by yourself, and guess what? You're not going to be just by yourself. You'll probably be with your phone, social media. Can, can I preach that now? I mean, ain't it amazing? It's still the written word of God, but here we are 2021, so the deliverance is different, right? Right? Because you're no longer by yourself, the devil's like, oh, don't forget your phone. And the devil's like, take your phone with you, and then you go ahead and just diarrhea the mouth, but through text. May I submit to you, do you believe that God knows every text message that you have sent? Amen. <laughs> Amen. Sometimes we need to hear that as children of God going, oh, dang. Even if I delete it, Pastor? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right, brother D, right, brother DJ? But guess what? You have the blood of Jesus. Repent, and it's completely forgotten. Can I get an amen? amen? Repent. Hallelujah. For it is God who works in you, both to will and to do for his good pleasure. Amen? I stand before you and I submit to you that we, as Open Arms Community Church, whoever's preaching, Holy Spirit is the one preaching. Amen? We don't try to preach lessons to puff ourselves up, rebuke that. Just like you, I fear God Almighty. And I only want Holy Spirit to flow. Pastor and I, we're held accountable. We're one. And I'll tell you right now, all we want is to bless Holy Spirit's presence. Amen. This is why many of you know, when you come into this holy place, immediately you could feel. You notice that you could be struggling with something. What, listen, Trish and I, we were, we're struggling this whole week. But it, it never, never fails, does it, that the moment we step in there, it's like, <sighs> and you can't get to the altar close. You can't get there fast enough. There's some of you tonight that's like, I just want to get to the altar. We're going to get there. 
but here in my heart, you don't need an invitation. You just go. Amen. You were going to, you were going to say it, huh? It's, o- it's open 24-7. Praise God. Do all things, say this with me, without complaining and disputing. Oh, my goodness. And that you may become blameless and harmless children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation. Among whom you shine as lights in the world, holding fast the word of life. Hallelujah. So that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain and labored in vain. And here... I just love the way the Apostle Paul is ministering to the anointing Holy Spirit saying, you are covered by God's blood if you personally receive Jesus as Lord. Amen. Amen. Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord. Hallelujah. There's power. Right? There is power in the name of Jesus. Come on, everybody. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain. So these chains that that God is referring to right now, If I'm struggling with anxiety, does that name break that chain? If I'm struggling with depression, does that name break that chain? If I'm struggling with maybe I think that I'm better than somebody, rebuke that. We ain't better than nobody. Can I get an amen? There's only one that's better. His name is Jesus. Amen. We ain't better than nobody. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We are all children of God. And what God has called us to do is to love one another. Right? To bless one another. Amen. Not to judge and grumble, complain, and throw rocks at each other. Oh, here's another thing. Some of y'all ain't going to like this. Somebody throw a rock at you, you don't pick it up and... That's not Jesus. You know, you want to see what Jesus is? Here, if you want to do it again, I'll pray for you. Who has a relationship like that with God right now? Who has a relationship like that with God? That here, if you didn't get it out, if you didn't get it out here, because I know what I did to my Christ. But I love you. See, it's moments like that that you can actually reach a soul for Christ because the conviction of his light, Holy Spirit, that he, will, he or she will witness and go, what? But I just cussed you out. I just called you every name in the book. I told you I hate you. I don't want nothing to do with you. But you're going to come back at me and say, you love me? You're going to come back at me and say, you want to pray for me? It's moments like that where someone will be receptive of going, I need to serve the God that you serve. Because he's shining through you. He's living abundantly through you. Amen. We don't act like this world. Amen. So when we talk about this, Philippians 2, verses 3 to 14. If you notice, this is a yield sign right here. A big thing about this road trip that we're taking, Destination Heaven, but we're on this road map. We want everybody to come to know Jesus, right? And don't get me wrong, I get it, family. Many of you working overtime right now, loving and sharing the gospel to your blood family. When I say blood family, not the blood of God, but what you're born into. You're trying, right? And I understand it gets frustrating sometimes because either there's some that Just keep that religion to yourself, and you're like, it's not religion, it's a relationship. Whatever it is, I don't want to hear it. And it hurts you because you're like, I don't want you to go to hell. Listen, we're already living in hell. 
look at this world. Come on now, right? But so we need, to, we need to keep in mind that even though that there's a goal, you know, we can be goal-driven all we want, right? How many of you have goals? Show of hands, right? It's good to have goals as long as God is on top of those goals. Can I get an amen? Amen. He's first always, Brother David. Now, when the goal becomes above God, it becomes an idol. God, let, let me make this clear. God hates idols. If you want to get God, the only God, agape, we call Father, Son, Holy Spirit. If you want to get God angry, upset, hurt, put an idol in your life. Right? Come on now. We need to get rid of idols. Now, I don't know, right? Once again, no judgment. We don't do that. But I know in my relationship with God, God will show to me, expose to me, this needs to be gone. You need to get rid of that. You need to stop eating that. You need to stop, right? He lives in you. Amen? He lives in you. Right? You start having a bad thought, what does the Holy Spirit tell you right away? See, look up. everybody in the room, don't you love it? Yeah, that's God Almighty saying, right? And then, of course, when, when, when God encourages you and he tells you not to do it, what, is, what, kind of, what kind of visuals that he put in your head, right? Oh, right, Sister Ashley's like overwhelmed, right? Right? You think of Jesus, you see Jesus, right? You see Jesus. I mean, many of us, you see Jesus. And then you get that feeling, Right? And see, all God is asking for us to do in this relationship with him is, say this word with me, yield. yield. See, this word yield, whoo, it's a powerful word. Because if we choose not to yield, there can be a collision. But the beauty about this word yield is, it's just but a moment. God is asking us in times of busyness, in times of those distractions from the enemy? What's a distraction from the enemy, pastor? Well, maybe your child ain't acting right. And it's an opening right there to just, what is wrong with you, right? You have every right to just go off, but it's that, it's that moment where are we going to yield the Holy Spirit and just say, Father, you were already in this situation. You already knew what this child was going to do because this child belongs to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I have nothing to do with this child. I have everything to do with you, Lord Jesus Christ. So as I submit and I yield to you, Father, bless me with the wisdom and the anointing to address this child in your way, not my way. Amen? Amen. Amen. Pray out loud in front of that child, in front of your spouse, in front of your family member, right? I don't understand why we got so religious with God where, well, I'll go pray, but I got to go into the... I got to go into the room, right? If you're in a conflict or if you're in a dispute or if in, you're in whatever situation that the enemy is hoping to distract you enough where you know that you're, mm, I just want to snap. That's the devil trying to make you lash out. And God is giving you the anointing through Christ to say, let's just stop. Brothers, we're mad right now. Let's just stop. We're, we're hurting Holy Spirit. Let's just pray. I'm going to tell you, I've had people do it. I don't want to pray. You pray yourself. That's between you and God. Peace out. Love you. Peace. Right? Hallelujah. That's favor from God right there, right? Then go. But I, you know what I love? The ones that stay and pray right after the prayer. Tears. I love you. You know, that devil tried. Right? Let's just give God praise for yielding. Amen? Let's yield. There are three main types of distractions when we talk about driving. Did you know that? Anybody? I thought you had my back at least. There's manual distraction when your hands are off the wheel. Visual distraction when your eyes are off the road. Cognitive distraction when your mind is wandering. These are the three main distractions of driving. Who here drives? Pretty much all of everybody. Okay, praise God. Thank you. Thank you, sister. Check this out. What we want to do is we want to go ahead and we want to attack this one by one.
Because in the natural, this is already proven that these are the three distractions when you're driving. And remember, we're on a road trip. Amen? And we already went through the specific instructions in what God told the Philippians, the church of Philippi, right? And now God is telling the church of Lebanon, Kentucky, right? We're going to stay on this road trip and we're going to be alert. So the first thing we're going to attack is this manual distraction, hands off the wheel. And our focus, of course, is going to be on our Lord Jesus Christ. We're going to get in Hebrews 10, 25. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. Holy Spirit wants me to tell every one of you because this is Wednesday evening worship service. Hallelujah. I'm so thankful, so proud of you guys being here on a Wednesday evening. It's 130 degrees outside. I don't need to tell you that. <laughs> it's 130 degrees outside and you guys fought through it, persevered, right? Sweat drop by sweat drop. You're like, I'm making it to church. Amen. So, so listen, there's a lot of this tonight that's going to be a review, but every, the way Holy Spirit brings it all together is beyond me. Amen. He's the teacher. But I just ask you, even though you heard this before, remember, don't be familiar with God. If you choose to be familiar with God, you're telling God, I already know that. Guess what? You're going to walk out with what you already know. But in your relationship with God, if you can purposely just say, Father, I want to listen to this as if this was the first time. Amen. Holy Spirit, teach me. Amen. amen. Light a fire in me. Amen. amen. Come on now. Say it with me. Light a fire in me. Amen. He's the only one that can. Amen. amen. I'll tell you right now, religion cannot light a fire. No. no, right? Works cannot light a fire. Right? Knowledge can't light a fire. Only Holy Spirit can light this fire in you. Amen. amen. Praise God. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves as a manner of some, that's real crucial when the Bible calls out those that that's what they do. I'm going to tell you right now, that's scary. That's scary. Listen, beloved church family, I pray that we're raptured all together. Amen. Amen. I do. I pray, that, I pray that you're physically going to be here together. I pray for your families. Trish and I pray every day for your families, everyone that you're reaching out. Listen, there's reserved seats for all of them. Amen. Amen. And we're calling them in. Can you say that with me? Call them in, Lord. Hallelujah. We're calling them all in. And I say this to you because when the Bible talks about there are some that's in a habit of not going to church and coming together, oh, be careful. Because you could already feel God's judgment on that. Lord Jesus Christ died for the church. Lord Jesus Christ is coming back for the church. church. Amen. So I, I, just, I just pray that right now, that not only that you have that in you and you just, mm, mm, that treasure in you, you keep it for all of eternity, but now you reach out to your family, to your friends and say, look, it's time to get right with the Lord. Well, I don't need to come to church. Yes, you do. You do. You do need to come to church. Amen. How many of you buy groceries not going to the grocery store? Oh, yeah, you, you, you can go out in the field. All right. All right, so for Brother PJ, since he wants to be like that today, how many of you get groceries not going to the grocery store and not going on the field? Right? You have, you, you, you have to go to or your greenhouse. Okay, you guys are being difficult. Just being so difficult now, complicated, Amen. But listen to how God encourages us, exhorting one another and so much more, so much the more as you see the day approaching. How many of you know that God is coming soon? Amen. The day is approaching, right? Amen. So I'm going to warn you through Holy Spirit. And you cannot use this as an excuse. The devil will try. To stop you from coming to church. The devil will lay out as many distractions so that you will stop coming to church. Now in the name of Lord Jesus Christ, say it with me, no more. No more. Hallelujah, no more. The reason why, listen, God has his anointing over his church and he flows through every one of you as beloved children of God. You are his beloved so, of course, if he can keep you home, if the devil can keep you home, the devil's just hoping because he's not God. 
The devil's just hoping that because you chose to stay home and not come to church and fellowship and build one another up, that that's a domino effect because you may have a relationship with somebody and they're looking forward to seeing you. And guess what? You don't come to church once, twice. Guess what? The devil's hoping that person gets frustrated and go, well, I'm not going to church too. It's happening. Yeah. Right now it's happening. I'm speaking to people that I'm just, I'm just so blown away going, why do you want to talk to me at 9, 10 o'clock at night? Why do you need to meet with me? And you can't make it to church. Amen. Amen. And I'm starting to tell people, no more talking, come to church. Then we're going to talk. Because I'm not God. God paid for this right here. Can I get a hallelujah? God paid for us to be right here. Amen. But listen, family, you carry the blessing and the miracle, beloved daughter of God, which means I need to see you. I want to hug you. I love you. I know you love me. Yeah, I love that smile, right? I love, <laughs> you know what's so sweet about Holy Spirit? Holy Spirit said, do this, and then you're going to smile, and it's so cute. But, but isn't it the truth? And we hug each other, and we, we know it's all God because we're like, oh, my goodness, thank you, Lord. But see, the devil's hoping to stop that so that the next time, oh, so-and-so ain't here. What's going on? And, of course, as a pastor, I don't judge, and I'm not going to lie for you. But all I tell every soul is pray for them. Right? Just pray for them. But what's going on? Just pray for them. Amen? I can't make people come to church. I can't. I could preach to you till I pass out. I'm not, I can't make anybody come to church. Say it with me, this is between me and God. Amen. And so I ask you, come to church. Amen. So when we talk about the manual distraction, that is hands off the church. Hands off the church, meaning it's not a priority in my life. Remember, we're talking about we're going on this road trip, and we rebuke getting in an accident, right? We rebuke these distractions. Well, I'm telling you, number one distraction here is not coming to church. Hands off of church. I don't need to. Are you kidding me? You know, I asked somebody not too long ago, I said, do you believe strongly that you don't have to come to church? And he said, I am the church. I said, no, you're not. You're not the church. You are a member of the body. But are you part of a body of, of members? Amen. Are you part of a body? Well, Jesus Christ is my Lord. Listen, that's between you and the Lord, but where is the body? You're a member, where is the body? And you know what's amazing? Sometimes, I don't know if it's the way I look, I don't know if it's my attitude, but sometimes people look at me like, are you speaking English? <laughs> what do you mean? What do you mean, where's the body? I'm standing right here. I know you're standing right here, but you just spoke out. You don't think it's important or a necessity to go to church. Where do you get that? Where is that in the Bible? Because I can take you to the Bible where that's a sin. It's deliberate sin. The Bible says deliberate sin. And then I go further because he didn't want to talk about it no more. And I said, you married? Yeah. How long have you been married? Five years. Is it an awesome marriage? Mm. So you're good with that. See, don't talk to me if you don't want to get real, Right? Right? Pastor knows this. Pastor knows that. I mean, what you see is what you get. You're going to talk to me. We're going to talk. Amen. But don't expect me to just, oh, yeah, that's great. You don't want to go to church. I said, go to good boy. Amen. Oh, you've been married five years. But, eh, oh, it's a good boy. God holds me accountable to say, is that good for you? Is that good for God? And then he says, well, I guess not, but I never had anybody say that to me. Because you don't go to church. Amen. Can I get an amen? Because you don't go to church. 
This is beyond us. He's God Almighty. And he puts this specific instructions in place for our good and benefit. Not to throw stones at each other. Not to judge one another. Not, to, not any of that. But to encourage and bless and to love and to show his light and to go, oh my goodness, I need to repent. God forgive me. Amen? The next one. Say it with me. GPS. GPS. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, for whom the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of God. Amen? Amen. Look at Jesus. So the visual distraction is eyes off of Jesus. Number two. See, it went from hands off the wheel, eyes off the road, hands off of church. Then what follows after that? Eyes off of Jesus. I see it time and time and time again. Oh, pastor, are you mad at me? No, I love you. I'm so thankful for you. I thank God that you, you choose to bless Holy Spirit and keep persevering and fighting. But I'm also making us aware that this devil, he has deceived many already. Amen. And I'm going to tell you, these many that are deceived, they're living life like the world is and blaming God for what the devil done did. Amen. Say it with me, GPS. GPS. Do you not know that your body is the temple of Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God? And you are not your own? As I scan the room and I look around, I know, glory to God, who I worship with. And I know, you know, that without a shadow of doubt, with every fiber of you, my God has sealed me. He knows me by name. And he lives in me. Amen. I know who I'm worshiping with, that as you bless God, you know that God Almighty, that no matter what happens to this vapor of a life, your very next breath is with him for eternity. Amen. 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 Oh, my gosh. Hallelujah. Say it with me, victory. victory. Hallelujah. And this is God's GPS, what I like to call. Well, let me go back over here. Sorry. Say it with me. GPS, God's positioning system over your life. Yes. Don't be hands off of church. Listen, I'm going to challenge. Are you ready for this? Amen. Put your grown up ears on. Amen. Put your grown up ears on. Let's get ready because this is going to be a hard one. Put it on. Are you ready? Don't get comfortable. If you're coming to Open Arms Community Church and you're just comfortable, it's time to get uncomfortable. Amen. Are you ready for this? Start serving. Amen. Start doing, right? Let's start doing work. Yes. Amen. Listen, I need your help. Amen. Right, Pastor? We need everybody's help. We need teachers. We need ministers. You know, please, this isn't for the preacher. This isn't for the elders, the leadership. This is for God Almighty. Amen. And when you choose to get uncomfortable with God and step out in faith, oh, get ready. Amen. Because your intimacy with the Lord is just beyond comprehension. Amen? So what are we driving? What are we driving? We already went through everything, right? We went through everything. We went through the road map. We went through the destination. We want to be blameless for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. We know because the word of God says here in Philippians 2, don't grumble. Don't complain, right? No, let's not gossip about each other. Let's be faithful. Let's come. Let's not be hands off the church. Let's be involved in church. Don't act like, remember, when the word of God says, don't act like them. I'm going to tell you. Come on, mama. I, I'm not going to act like them. Amen. I don't want to smell like them. I don't want to look like them. I'm not going to act like them. Can I get an amen? amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> and check this out. This is what we're driving. We're going to drive an Accord. Let me explain. This is a Honda Accord. Let me explain. Therefore, Therefore is there, if there is any consolation in Christ, 
if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by being like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Amen. Amen. Let's stand up on our feet. Praise God. We're not all going to fit in, an, in a Honda Accord. I know there's some of you going, how are we all going to fit in that? But this being in one accord, what's amazing, what I've learned so much in this past three and a half years, being blessed beyond measure to pastor the greatest church in all of this world, Open Arms Community Church. Let's give God praise. Amen. So thankful for a pastor that from the very day one, he said to me, all I want to do is worship. And we were tested, right, Pastor? And there's still going to be tests. But where I'm at with you, my beloved family, is that the time is short. Don't let anyone fool you. The time is short. And Lord Jesus Christ, he's coming back, like the word of God says, like a thief in the night. When you least expect it. But here's the beauty about Holy Spirit. Say his name, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. When you're intimate with Holy Spirit, when you're involved in church, being the light that God paid for, being encouraging. Listen, there's so many souls that God is going to reach through you. But here's the thing. God needs you to step out. Yes. Right? Yes. When you're involved in church, God helps us to be more in focus. Yes. Amen? Yes. And when you're more in focus, I'll tell you right now, it just gets gooder and gooder yes. in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. So I'm going to ask you something um, from what you saw tonight and how Holy Spirit taught us this. We're about ready to get out of here in the next half an hour. Amen. But what Holy Spirit wants to know from you is, is there anything going on in your life that you know from hearing this message that it doesn't belong? Are you where you want to be in your involvement in your church? Is your focus in Christ where you want it to be? Or is there something that's bothering you? You see, Holy Spirit right now is working on all of us. Amen? I encourage you, before you leave tonight, leave it at the altar. If you need prayer, we have all of our elders here, praise God, except for Elder Brad. But I mean, I know they'll anoint you in oil. The Word of God says, listen, family, listen. I fear and I have reverence and I love my elders. Because I know the anointing that they carry through Christ. And the Bible says that if you, if you approach them and you just confess to them, maybe there's some of you that need to confess something to the Lord. You just, you just go and tell them, Elder, this is what's going on in my life. I don't want it no more. No judgment. We can't do that. But they'll take the oil out, anoint you in oil. And you will feel Holy Spirit fire on your life like never before. Amen? Yeah. Say it with me. Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus 